Does the Holy Spirit want us? Excuse me, what did you say, sir? You heard what I said. Does the Holy Spirit warn us of danger? Hello, my friends. I'm Daniel Talley, the Note to Self Guy, and welcome to my channel. Now, if you're tuning in for the first time, you may be wondering, the Note to Self Guy, is this dude associated with the skit guys? Uh, no, I am not. Although the skit guys are my brothers in Christ, and I have to tell you, they do have a wonderful channel. I am simply a dude who loves Jesus, and I have been given the mission to help my viewers to think about their relationship with Christ. Basically, what I do is that I answer problem situations and or sin using biblical scripture, and then I use uh, skits, cartoons, symbols, and music, and poor man's proverbs from my award-winning and best-selling book, Note to Self, Faithful Inspiration and Aspiration. Now that we got that out the way, let's get to the meat and the potatoes of this episode. Does the Holy Spirit warn us? First of all, what is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is the third person in the Trinity. First, you have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now, you may be saying, hey, bro, you got an example of what you're talking about? Yes, I do. The baptism of Jesus is a perfect example of the Trinity. Check out Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. The visual of this scripture is off the charts. God, the Holy Spirit is in us. Now, I have to tell you, the Holy Spirit does a lot of things, but among them, it convicts us, it instructs us, it encourages us, and it guides us through this thing called life. Yo, God, the Holy Spirit is a GPS. You know, it ain't like we know where we're going. We need it. Let's take a closer look at the Holy Spirit. If we were to peel back the onion, here's what we would find. The Holy Spirit consists of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. The fruits of the Spirit can help to navigate us through life, but only if we allow the Holy Spirit to guide us. You know, the fruits of the Spirit basically are like weapons of mass destruction, but in reverse. When used individually or as a tandem, guess what happens? We can eliminate problems, situations, uh, and or sins. As a matter of fact, it provides us with a pathway to doing the right thing. Your mission is to help to spread the good news by helping this channel to grow. Hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Mission accomplished. Congratulations, you've done your good deed for the day. Thanks for subscribing. Okay, so let me give you an example. That's right, it's story time. Those of you who know me know that I am a car guy. And back in 2015, I saw this beautiful blue 2010 Acura MDX. The car kind of reminded me of a beautiful Cinderella, but unfortunately, uh, I later found out that the personality of that car was more like uh, Cinderella's ugly stepsisters, but I'll explain more about that later. Anyways, I just had to have that car. So, like any good Christian, what did I do first? I prayed first. But you know, I was out of order from Jump Street. Why? Because I had already made up in my mind that I wanted that car. All I needed God for was for him to provide the financing. Good Christ, don't Moses, man! What's wrong with you? You made the decision to buy that car and then ask God's blessing after the fact. That wasn't a good move, doctor! For those of you watching this video, please don't do this. Because if you do, you'll be sorry that you're dead! The prayer should have been, Lord, should I get this car? And if so, can you make it happen? Now, you know, there's a big difference between this prayer and what I prayed for the first time. Even with this misguided prayer about purchasing the car, the Holy Spirit said no. It just didn't sit right in my spirit. But I had to have that car. Those kind of decisions will kill you faster than a dead man. Think about it. A dead man doesn't think. And neither will you, dummy. Even though God said no, I proceeded with the purchase anyway. During the pre-owner inspection, my mechanic found some minor issues with the car. The dealer did fix those, however. Strike number one. Normally, I'm a pretty good negotiator, as I always like to get the price down. However, I was not able to get the price down very much on this car. Strike number two. The Holy Spirit kept telling me, Daniel, don't do it. Don't do it. But I continue to do it. I had to go through so many hoops getting this car financed. It was crazy. Strike three. But of course... In the back of my mind, the Holy Spirit kept telling me, Daniel, don't do it. 
Good heavens, mister! For the love of Benji and his mother, how many strikes do you need, sir? There's no hope for this guy, I tell ya! Remember, God gives us free will, and oftentimes that's when our problems begin. Okay, continuing on with the story. Yay! I finally got the loan, at a higher interest rate, mind you. But the beautiful MDX was finally mine. Strike number four. Remember earlier in the story I told you that this car had the personality of uh, Cinderella's ugly stepsisters? Well, let me get to that point. In less than two months, this car began to uh, nickel and dime me to death with just little small little knick-knacky things that just kept breaking down uh, to the point where I said, you know what, I got to get rid of this thing because this thing is, uh, uh, it's, it's robbing me blind. You know, I began to think that this car was probably made on a Friday at 4.59, pretty close to quitting time. What I wound up buying was a nicely dressed lemon. That's for sure. But of course, in the back of my mind, the Holy Spirit kept telling me, dude, I tried to warn you, but you wouldn't listen. Finally, I had had enough. After six months, I decided to uh, cut my losses and get rid of the car. So I sold it. Come on. And unfortunately, I sold it at a $5,000 loss. Ouch. Looks like this guy needed five strikes. Listen, mister, I know clowns that make better decisions than you. Now that you know, you need to do better. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. Note yourself, the devil is to do with the crooked path that leads to destruction. Doing what you want to do without the counsel of God puts you on that crooked path, sir. Is that really what you want? So, what did I learn from this little experience? Well, after my misguided prayer, God told me no, but I didn't listen. So, I've learned through experience in life that when God wants you to have something, there's nothing on this world that can stop you from getting what it is that he has for you. And when God gives you something, he makes it easy, there's no stress involved, there's no hoops you gotta jump through, there's no anxiety. Uh, God is a God of order, not a God of confusion. So, the moral of the story is, don't be a dummy. Listen to the Holy Spirit, because it is God's GPS to mankind. 